Hey, you guys. So it is great to be in Winsboro. We're here to win. That's what we're here for in Winsboro. So let me say this. It is true. People talk about me being rich. And I did start a business and make some money. But you should know that my mom was a school teacher in the public schools of New York. And she ended up, after she retired as a school teacher, she went and taught prisoners in the Brooklyn House of Detention. Not exactly what you think of as somebody who is a Mar-a-Lago kind of person. My dad was the first person in his family to go to college. He graduated from college at 18. He became a lawyer. He went into the Navy in World War II. And he ended up prosecuting Nazi war criminals after the war because as a naval officer. And what he told us was, when you see something that's evil in society, when you see something that is deeply wrong, then you should fight it as fast, as hard, and as strong as you possibly can. And that's why I went after Donald Trump, because that's what I saw. And that's still what I see from Donald Trump. Here is a guy who stands for everything I disapprove of in this whole world. And so we are not going to, look, I built a business. I walked away from the business. I took the giving pledge to give the bulk of my money to good purposes while I'm alive. And since then, I've been putting together coalitions of people like you guys to fight the corporations who I think have bought our government and own everything and so stop that government from working from the people in this town. And let me say this. I have never lost. I have beat oil companies. I have beat tobacco companies to make them pay three to four billion dollars a year in health care costs for Medi-Cal, lowest income people in California. I've beat drug companies. I have beat utilities. I have never lost. And here's why. They're not that smart. We can beat them every single time. And that's what I'm here to do. I want to go to Washington, D.C and beat those corporations every single time on behalf of the people of the United States and the people of Winsboro, South Carolina. Look, I think they've bought the government, and I think they're walking on the constitutional rights of the people in this town. As far as I'm concerned, you guys have a constitutional right to affordable health care. Only question is how it gets delivered. You have a right to that. I believe you have a constitutional right to quality public education, including universal preschool for every single kid. Annie was saying I care about education. The number one thing that determines success in this society is the third grade reading comprehension level of kids. That means we got to get to them early, and it's in, there's nothing we shouldn't be doing to invest in those kids starting at three. Anything it takes. Third thing is, $7.25 an hour, that's ridiculous. That is corporations ripping off the people of the United States. $7.25? Really, if that was just inflation adjusted, it should be 11, and the fair number should be 22 bucks an hour. That should be the minimum wage in the United States of America, 22 bucks. Think about what this country would be like if we had a $22 minimum wage. Completely different. Other thing, look, I believe that every American, including every single person I'm looking at, has a constitutional right to breathe clean air and drink water from the tap that doesn't make them sick. No one gets to poison your family for money. The Republicans don't believe that. I mean, that is a, no one gets to poison you. Look, I've been to Denmark, South Carolina, just to see one of the most egregious examples of people being poisoned by the water that comes out of the tap. And let me say this, I've been to Flint, Michigan. I've been to Newark, New Jersey. I've been to the San Joaquin Valley in my home state of California. The place this society puts its poison is in black and brown communities. And it's about time we call this out. 
It's poison. It should be illegal. It should be criminal. It's going to be criminal to poison people for money. The last thing I want to say is this. The, uh, the constitutional right that's being walked on. The right to a fair vote for every American. Rep I'm, Republicans have been in an organized fashion taking away the vote from hundreds of thousands or millions of African Americans in this country. It's dead wrong. If you think about it, that is something that I will have people look at from a criminal point of view. Not just wrong, criminally wrong. We're going to have one rule of law here, and if you do things that are wrong from a corporation or a position of power, you're going to jail. We're not asking for a fine. We're actually going to go after people. That's what we're going to do. So let me talk for one second about, well, let's start on race for a second, because I'm one of the people in this country who believes we have to talk about race that in virtually every policy area in the United States, there's an unspoken but incredibly important aspect that is racial. So if you look at criminal justice, you can't look at criminal justice in this country without talking about race, whether you're talking about policing, sentencing, what happens when you're incarcerated, what happens after you're incarcerated. Just so you guys know, I worked in my home state of California to get rid of cash bail. We got rid of cash bail. Because it's incredibly unfair that somebody goes to jail if they can't make bail before they've been convicted of a crime. But if you can make bail, you get, to, you get to stay out and live with your family and go to work. We got rid of cash bail. We got rid of some of the aspects of mandatory sentencing because it's cruel and unfair. We got rid of private prisons. We got rid of private prisons either for incarceration or detention. Nobody should be making money from this. I've worked to restore the rights of previous incarcerated people after they come out. Given how racist the system is going in, why do people have to pay penalties after they've paid their, their debt to society? There is a huge issue about race and criminal justice, but that's just an example. There is an education. There is in housing. You can't look at housing in this country and not know that redlining prevented African Americans from, be, from buying houses and from getting that benefit in terms of creating wealth. You can't look at it. Just so you guys know, 15 years ago, my wife and I started a community bank dedicated to the ideas of economic justice, environmental sustainability, support businesses owned by women, black people, and Latinos. Where the banks wouldn't go, we go. Because the point is, if you can't borrow money for your business, how do you have a business? If you can't borrow money to buy a house, how do you get a house? That in every single part of life, you need money coming into the community to support you. I did that 15 years ago, not because I was running for president. Because there was something wrong in America that we were trying to redress. So when I look at the system, it's not just a question of a minimum wage. That makes me crazy. I'm a huge union supporter. I'm a supporter of a $22 minimum wage. But more than that, I'm a supporter of black people owning businesses, getting control of the means of production, actually running things. Look, the other thing I'm for, you guys should know, in fighting these, I'm an outsider. I've never lost to these corporations. I built one of the biggest grassroots organizations in this country called Next Gen America, basically registering and engaging mostly young people, but specifically black young people as a part of it. I've never lost, but part of it is I don't have any allegiance to Washington, D.C. I'm not a career politician. I am for term limits of 12 years for every congressperson and senator, because if you want to change, put new and different people in charge. Get Annie McDaniels in charge. We'll get different decisions. Put Senator Scott in charge. Look, I say about term limits, a six-word argument for term limits, Mitch McConnell, Lindsey Graham, Ted Cruz, out, 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 out. Look, these guys, that crew 
just held a trial where they had no witnesses. They held a trial where they said he's innocent before they held the trial. They said, we don't even care about what happened. We don't care about the evidence. He's innocent regardless of the evidence. That, what a crew is that? Look, one of the things that's going on in the United States is de- there are Democrats who are saying, we really need to convince Republicans to vote for us. And I'm like, you're not going to, that's not working. We're not like Republicans. Everything they're doing, I hate. I want to turn the page on the Republicans. And so I say, I haven't seen anyone convince Mitch McConnell to meet in the middle. No one ever goes to Mitch McConnell and says, how are you going to get along with Democrats? People come to me every single day and say, how are you getting along with Mitch McConnell? I'm like, I'm not. No interest. We have to win. And that is not, a, we have to actually get everybody to show up at the polls and win. Not meet in the middle. I got no, there is no middle with racists. There's no, there's no middle with people who deny science. And there's no middle with people who in a trial say, he's innocent, I don't care about the facts. There's no middle. So let's talk for one second. I know, well, let, let's keep going a little bit on this. <laughs> Look, I'm, I think, the only person running for president who will say that he or she is for reparations. I'm for reparations. And I'll tell you why. Look, I believe that policy comes out of narrative and truth. So you want to be unjust, tell a lie. You want to torture Latino kids, claim that Latinos are murderers and rapists, then you torture their kids. That's what Trump does. But do you want a just policy, then tell the truth, because the justice comes out of the truth. So what I want to do, look, for instance, in HBCUs, I want to put up $125 billion to revive and build out HBCUs. It's a multiple of what anyone else has ever talked about. And the reason is, there's a story here. Black kids weren't allowed to go to mainline colleges and universities came up with an alternative system, has worked, has produced the majority of black generals, judges, doctors, engineers, teachers. Thank God. Thank God they exist and they're starved for money. So as a a point about the justice of the system, what's needed for the kids, but also how important they are to the communities where they're located, isn't the right thing to make sure that that system flourishes and grows and gets stronger. Out of the narrative of where we came from comes the justice of the decision. That's why I'm for reparations. I say retell, I'd have a formal commission on race to retell the story of the last 400 plus years in America of the African American community so people know not just the injustice, the legal racism, the cruelty, but also the contribution. How much black people have done to build this country and the moral leadership that the African-American community has brought to this country for generations and centuries. People need to know the contribution and then we talk about repairing the damage and the injustice and there's no way to get around this is about money. So we're gonna have to we're gonna have to go tell the story and figure out how that money gets delivered, but it has to change. Something was done that was deeply wrong, and we have to repair it. So let me say I want to talk about rural America for a sec. Rural America has to be connected to urban America. It has to be roads. It has to be bridges, and it has to be broadband. And we have to make sure that every rural town has adequate health care and first-class schools, or people can't afford to live here. That has to be a given. I said affordable health care is a right for every single American in the 21st century. It has to be. It is. I will deliver that. And quality public education, you cannot ask a town to exist 
without spending the money on education. We spend over $700 billion a year on defense. We spent trillions on these wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. The federal government spends a total of $70 billion a year, one-tenth of what they spend on defense, on education. I can tell you there's enough money in the budget. By the time we raise taxes on these corporations and rich people, there's going to be more than enough money for education. And I, if we do what I want, I will deliver a 10% tax cut to every American who makes less than 250000 bucks a year. We can take this back. This is about literally taking back this country. And the last thing I want to say is this. We know Mr. Trump can win. That's what we saw last week. We should be asking ourselves who can beat Mr. Trump because he's running, he's a demagogue, and he's running on the economy. He is saying to the people of America, you don't like me, I'm a criminal, I'm a racist, I don't like you. But you have to vote for me because the Democrats are socialists. They don't know anything about economics. You can't afford not to vote for me because the economy will fall apart without me. He can't say that about me. I built a business from scratch to billions of dollars. He's a fake. He went bust on a series of casinos. How do you even do that? I mean, think for a second. How do you go bust on a casino? You're just taking people's money. He did it. He's a fake. He's terrible for the people of the United States on money. He says the economy's growing, and the answer is it is growing, and all the money's going to rich people. He says unemployment is low. He's right, but you can't live on $7.25 an hour. And he says the stock market is up. If you don't own stock, who cares? Who cares? The truth, is, I call it the Mar-a-Lago economy. The people at his country club think the economy is great, and it is great for them. But it's not great for the people of this town, and it's not great for working people across this country. I can take him down. I am going to take him down. And I'm going to take him down on behalf of you. That is exactly why I'm running. I want this guy out. I want his whole crew out. They are cruel people to Americans. And they are going to have, I want to turn the page on this whole thing. So I want, I am asking you guys for your vote because I promise you there will be no day that I don't get up and try and take these people down and out. And there'll be no day that I don't get up and fight my ass off for you. That's my promise and I'm asking you to support me because that is what I promise you I will do every day of the week. Thank you very much. Well, let's win.